Good evening, everyone. I hope you can all hear me uh, properly, that the translation uh, is, of course, working at the same time. It's a pleasure to welcome all of you here tonight for the second of our four lecture series, which are dedicated to the year of Cardinal Bea. It's the 50th anniversary since his death. It's an occasion, I think, not just to remember, but also, of course, to celebrate to celebrate his incredible legacy. The conference uh, tonight is organized by the Center uh, Cardinal Bea of the Gregorian, the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity, the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, and the Pontifical Biblical Institute. It's a very joyous moment of dialogue, but I do have to start by, of course, reminding us of the tragedies that are constantly unfolding either last night in Strasbourg, which is in fact where I come from, and also in Rome a few days ago with the uprooting of the Jewish cobblestones in some parts uh, of the city. It dims certainly the joy of the meeting. It dims the joy of the season. And I can only maybe just quote the Hasidic rabbi Menachem Mendel of Kotsk, who when his students were overwhelmed with sadness and anguish, told them, go back to studying, go back to studying. And he said to them, your sadness will remain a sadness. Your questions will remain questions, your doubts will remain doubts, but you will be able to carry on and to go on living. And this is really, in fact, what we do today. It's a really studying exercise that we do together. So the theme of our lecture today is the Bible from three point of view. It's a theme of biblical studies that, of course, was very dear to Cardinal Bea, who served as the rector of the Biblicum for quite a long and crucial period of time. But it's a theme of biblical study that must be understood in the wider context of the legacy of Cardinal Bea, whose work really was centered around three components, ecumenism, Jewish-Christian dialogue, and Bible. And so tonight, in proposing the Bible from three point of view, a Jewish, a Catholic, a Protestant point of view, we feel somehow at one with the spiritual legacy of Cardinal Bea. So we are very honored to have with us four distinguished speakers, and let me very briefly and succinctly introduce them to you. First of all, we'll have Professor Michael Kolarczyk, who since 2014 is the rector of the Pontifical Biblical Institute. Professor Kolarczyk was previously the professor of Old Testament studies at Regis College in the University of Toronto, and he will give tonight the opening address offering an historical perspective on the work of Cardinal Bea as rector of the Biblicum. We will then be able to listen to uh, three key speakers. They will expose their own understanding of the way to traditionally comprehend and search for meaning in scripture according to their religious tradition. And first of all, next to me already, Professor Peter Machinist, from Harvard University. He is currently this semester teaching a course at the Biblicum on the Hebrew Bible as an ancient Near East book. Professor Machinist, as you know, was for many years the Hancock Research Professor of Hebrew and other Oriental languages in the Department of Near Eastern Languages and Civilization. And he was also part of the Harvard Divinity School. And Professor Machinis will present to us the fundamental, I think, principle of classical rabbinic perception of the Bible and how that translates into the rabbinic interpretation of scripture. We also have the pleasure to have with you Professor Daniele Garone from the uh, Waldenstein Faculty of Theology here in Rome. He will offer us a Protestant perspective on the topic and he will reflect on the Protestant tradition of biblical exegesis, and what are the key notions that sustain this different particular reading of the Bible and its interpretation. Professor Garone is an ordained minister of the Waldesian Church. He's also a professor of Old Testament at the Waldesian Seminary. Interestingly, he was educated in a Jewish school in uh, Turin, and this is where he learned and studied Hebrew and uh, 
Jewish liturgy as well. He studied theology here in Rome and as well as the University of Heidelberg. And he has been for nine years the president of the Italian Bible Society and he's been very active as well in the Christian Jewish Fellowship of Rome, which he presided, presided for many years as well. And lastly, we will have Professor Jean-Louis Ska, who is a Jesuit originally from Belgium. His academic background is in philosophy, biblical exegesis, theology. And since 1983, he is a professor of, at the Biblicum where he teaches Old Testament biblical exegesis. His many publication encompasses many areas of biblical study, style, structure, narration, theology in the biblical corpus, seeing the Bible really as a real exploration site where critical study and classical exegesis meet and where the synchronic and diachronic approach are at the same time perceptible. And Professor Ska will propose a Catholic perspective on the church tradition of scriptural interpretation. So without any further delay, I would like now to uh, ask Professor Kolarczyk to give the opening address tonight. So thank you very much, Rabbi David Meyer. Friends of the Cardinal Bea Center, as the current rector of the Pontifical Biblical Institute, I've been asked to give a brief account of Augustin Bea's long service as rector at the Biblicum for 19 years, from 1930 to 1949. As we know, those were eventful years for the Institute, for Europe, and indeed for the world and the church. The reason for this celebration of Cardinal Bea is the 50th anniversary of his death in the early morning of November 16th, 1968. The Cardinal Bayer Center is celebrating the anniversary with a series of four conferences throughout this academic year. Each conference touches on aspects that were close to the endeavors and contributions of Augustine Bea. The first conference was held last month on November 17th, and it examined the significance of the Vatican II document Nostra Etate. Declaration on the Relation of the Church to Non-Christian Religions, and Cardinal Bea's critical role in its formulation and promulgation. This evening, we will hear three presentations of perspectives on the Bible, Jewish by Professor Peter Machinist, Protestant by Professor Daniele Garone, and Catholic by Professor Jean-Louis Scan. As it turns out, the three areas I will highlight happen to correspond to his main contributions as rector of the Biblicum. Bea's promotion of solid Catholic exegesis, his commitment to dialogue with Protestant theologians, and his commitment to favor dialogue with Judaism. I will try to be short in order to leave pre precious time for our three main presenters this evening. A brief look at the biography of Augustine Bea. The first date there is 1900 to 1902. When he finished his gymnasium, his high school studies, he wanted to become a Jesuit. So at a very early age, he wanted to be a Jesuit. But he was the only son, and so his parents did not want him to become a Jesuit. They encouraged him to be a diocesan priest. And so he entered the seminary in Freiburg at the University of Freiburg in Breskau. And he studied there philosophy and some theology. But finally, his parents relented. So much did he want to be a Jesuit. So in 1902, he entered the Society of Jesus in Holland, in the Netherlands, in Blienbeck. And his formation as a, as a Jesuit took the normal uh, time frame of a Jesuit until, until his studies after, the, after ordination. So he studied uh, philosophy after, after his vows in Valkenburg, Holland. 
He did his regency. He taught classical languages in other high schools. And finally, he began his theological studies again at Valkenburg, Holland. And after his ordination, he was destined to study in order to prepare to be a biblical scholar. To do that, he went to uh, Berlin to study ancient Near Eastern history and philology. But as you know, the, um, the First World War intervened, and so his studies were cut short. So in fact, and this is an amazing observation to make, he in fact never had any formal biblical training. <laughs> and look what happened to him. So because of the, of the war, he ended up teaching. What do you do when you haven't been trained? You start teaching. And so he taught, <laughs> he taught uh, studies, basically theology, for a number of years until there was the formation of a new province. So in 1921, a new province was formed, the southern province of Germany, and he was its first rector. But he didn't finish that term either. So after four years of his term as provincial, he was called to Rome from where he would not leave. So he was named the rector of the Bellarmine residence, the college, which is not too far from here, which housed Jesuit students who were training in either licentiate or doctoral programs. While he was at the Bellarmine, he taught theology of the New Testament here at the Gregorian University. And at the same time, his first course in hermeneutics and pedagogy was taught at the Biblical Institute in 1924. After 1928, he was a permanent professor at the Biblical Institute. And of course, then he became the rector from 1930 to 49. And after that, he remained as a professor at the Biblical Institute for another 10 years until 1959 when he was elevated to become a cardinal and he was given the task of, being, of forming the secretariat for promoting Christian unity. Now this quick overview shows that his professional time was basically professor at the Pontifical Biblical Institute from 1924 right till 1959, when he should have retired. But of course, he received the task of um, forming the congregation for the, uh, not the congregation, but the secretariat for uh, promoting Christian unity. He was the longest standing rector of the Biblical Institute for 19 years. And the rector who came after him, Ernst Vogt, from a Swiss Jesuit who studied and taught in Brazil, he was the rector for 14 years. So as the present rector, I sincerely hope these two rectors have not in any way set a precedent. <laughs> I think they have not. They were special people for a very special time. So I would like to highlight three areas in which Augustine Bea excelled during his rectorship at the Biblicum. And these three areas will in turn be relevant to the three presentations that we will hear tonight. The first is commitment to scientific methodological exegesis. The second, commitment to dialogue with Protestants, Protestant theologians and exegetes. And the third, a commitment that he had to dialogue with Judaism based on the original languages, the original cultural context that gave rise to the word of God. So let me take the first. His commitment to scientific and methodological exegesis. Bayer's promotion of scientific methods of exegesis and hermeneutics must be prefaced with the note of the strong resistance to such methods in the Catholic Church. Already in 1941, the Pontifical Biblical Commission, spirited by Augustine Bea, sent a letter to the Italian hierarchy, vigorously defending the scientific study of the Bible against an aggressive obscurantism. And let's remember that that resistance to biblical exegesis lasted right into Vatican II. 
In 1943, Bea was highly influential in spiriting the encyclical of Pius XII, Divino Aflante Spiritu. And as we know well, this particular encyclical gave the green light for Catholic exegetes to make use of the new and viable exegetical methods. Cardinal Bea was also influential in the formulation not only of Nostra Etate, as we heard last month, but also of the dogmatic constitution Dei Verbum, which again promoted solid exegesis against the resistance to such methods, even up to the Council. Finally, Bea was the editor of the journal Biblica, the, very, the earliest journal of the Biblicum, for 20 years, from 1931 to 1951, including the volumes 12 right to 32. In his published works, which were not all that many, because he did so much teaching and administration, and in his several mimeograph textbooks and in his lectures, he insisted on wide scientific bases for scientific scholarship, knowledge of the biblical languages, sound exegetical method, and familiarity with all schools of exegetical thought. It reminds me of what the Biblical Institute stands for today. The second area that I would like to comment on, his commitment to dialogue with Protestant theologians and exegetes. I would just like to mention briefly three moments as his, in his rectorship. Again, I think it's important to realize that this particular commitment on the part of Bea to dialogue with Protestant theologians should be prefaced with the realization that Catholic scholars had been expressly forbidden to participate in conventions with Protestant and Jewish societies. A first event, in 1935, so this was under Pius XI, he convinced Pius XI to allow himself and several other Jesuits to attend a meeting of Old Testament exegetes at Göttingen in Germany. Bea was asked to chair the final session. Such was the impression he made on various scholars with his erudition and openness to new exegetical methods. In 1952, Bea was made an honorary fellow of the Society for Old Testament Studies, whose conference he organized at the Biblical Institute that year. And finally, as we, we know later, it would be Bea who would first suggest that non-Catholic observers be invited to the Second Vatican Council. And so eventually, 60 observers would attend. This final value, commitment to dialogue with Judaism based on the original cultural context of the Word of God. Bea's concern to have open dialogue with Juda Judaism through mutual respect would shine forth primarily in the Second Vatican Council. But his love for the original Hebrew language of the Bible and the Oriental languages formed the basis for his respect for Judaism as the inheritors of the First Testament. So the first point I would like to highlight, Bea was particularly affirmative in the study of the original languages. He was also very much interested in archaeology. In 1932, under his rectorship, so still under Pius XI, he brought about the ancient Near Eastern Studies faculty at the Biblical Institute. And at the same time, he launched the series Analecta Orientalia and the journal Orientalia, the Nova series, both of which continue to this day. He supported and encouraged the excavations at Tel Eilat Gasul in the Jordan and even took part in the archaeological excavations in 36 and 37. I believe it was due to his grasping of the importance of the original languages and the culture milieu of the Old and New Testaments that led Bea to be open to dialogue with Judaism and to foster a mutually respectful relationship between Catholicism and Judaism those attitudes would shine through so brightly 
in the formulation of Nostra Etate, which we heard in last month's conference. Dr. Saretta Marotta's detailed analysis of the tortuous machinations behind the scenes of the document read like a detective novel, and I'm looking forward to the publication of her book in the spring. Bea created the space and the context at the Biblicum over those many years of teaching and guidance as rector for excellence in exegesis. He created space for solid biblical scholarship and dialogue with Protestants and Jews in particular. Much of what the Biblicum continues to hold as important and stands for owes its origins in the work of this past rector. I sense that Augustine Bea is with us this evening and is eagerly listening in as we hear our three presenters address perspectives of reading the Bible from a Jewish, from a Protestant, and a Catholic standpoint. Thank you very much.